Hello, make sure you have these notes in front of you. Today we're talking about equations with decimals and fractions. Yes, your favorite. Make sure you have your name and date at the top. Also, make sure you have your calculator on you today. You are definitely going to need it. Last year on the New York State test, students were asked to find the solution for this problem. So let's work this problem through together. On the left side, if you notice, I don't have anything here, but on the anything I can simplify anyway, but on the right side, I can certainly distribute. Remember, that's one of the first questions you have to ask yourself, is there anything to distribute? And there is. So I'm going to multiply 2 times C. I get 2C. Now I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 5, and that is negative 10. I did not change anything on the left, so I'm going to rewrite everything as it was. Do you have this on your paper? If you don't, write it down now. Now, all we have is what we've been working on for several days. We have variables on both sides. It looks to me like we have more variables on the left side, so let's move everything with a variable to the left and everything with a constant to the right. Let's start by subtracting two C's here and two C's here. Do you have this lined up on your paper like I do? Please make sure your work is easy to read so you know what you did. 5c minus 2c is 3c plus 4 equals negative 10. I'm just bringing that down because 2c minus c, they cancel out. It's the additive inverse. They add up to 0. We don't need to write it. Now I simply have a two-step equation. And if you forget what to do, don't forget you wrote yourself a note. Variables on the left, constants on the right. I have a constant here that's positive 4. What do I have to do to move that constant? I have to do the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 4 on each side. Now I have 3c equals negative 14. When I divide each side by 3, I get c equals negative 14 thirds. It's not pretty, but it works. Make sure you have this. I'm going to scroll down. Now, what were to happen if we had a problem just like the one we just did, except there was a fraction and or a decimal in it? Well, we would solve it in the same way. And don't forget, you have a calculator. So there's nothing on the left I can simplify at this point. There's nothing to distribute. But there is on the right side. So I'm going to start on the right again. That's just how I work it. This time I have a negative 2, or negative 0.2, times c, so I'm going to write negative 0.2c. I have negative 0.2, or 2 tenths, times negative 5. That's going to give me a positive. Please check on your calculators. But if I recall, 2 times 5 is 10, but now that I have a decimal over here, it's really 1, or 2 tenths times 5 is 1. So there's my 1. On the left side, I'm just bringing everything down the way it is. There was nothing else to do. Okay, now we checked, we distributed. We have to do our, is it CLT, combine like terms, collect like terms. It looks to me like we have a positive C on the left side and a negative C on the right side. So we're probably going to move all of those to the left. Huh, I wonder how I could do that. There are lots of things I could do. I could multiply everything by 5 to get rid of my fraction. Should we do that? I like to get rid of the fractions. So let's just take everything here and multiply by 5. Why, you ask? Because I don't like to work with fractions and decimals. It's when I make the most mistakes. So if I multiply everything here by this denominator, I will get rid of the denominator. Because 1 fifth of 5 is 1, so I have C. Now 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, so far so good. Now, just like I did in the last one, 2 tenths times 5 is 1, but it's a negative, so it's a negative C, plus in 1 times 5 is 5. If at any point you are confused by what I have done, feel free to pause the video and go back. Now it looks like I have a positive constant on the left and a negative on the right. So let's say we're going to put all, oh, I said constant. I keep calling this these constants. They're variables. 
Let's move all the variables to the left because there are more variables on the left and all of the constants to the right. That C confused me. Let's add C here and add C here. Now we have two C's plus 20 equals five. Two-step equation, very simple. Now, if I'm putting all of the constants on the right, that need, means I need to move my 20. So I do the opposite. I subtract 20. Now I have 2C equals negative 15. I'm going to do my work over here because I'm running out of space. 2C equals negative 15. This is multiplication, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. C equals negative 7.5. Ooh, not bad. Not when you have a calculator. All right, I'm scrolling down. Now, look at this. Woo! Oh, let's try this one first. You have 2 thirds x plus 5 equals 1. Just refresh your memory a little bit with what I just did. This is a nice, simple one. I gave you this for a reason. What would happen if we multiplied everything here by 3? Would that get rid of our denominator? Yes, it would, and it makes things just a little bit neater. Because if you think about it, 3 over 1, the 3 cancels out the 3. If you don't believe me, 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 goes into 6 twice, so this equals 2. So therefore, these 3's cancel out. Okay, scribble that out. Now I have 2x. But don't forget, I need to distribute this here also. So 3 times 5 is 15. Woo, lots of work. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. If I multiplied everything on the left by 3, what do you think I have to multiply everything on the right by? Yes, 3. So now I have 2x plus 15 equals 3. Subtract 15 on each side. 2x equals negative 12. I hope you can read my writing. Divide both sides by 2. X is negative 6, and that's the solution. All right, I'm going to clear the board. Okay, this is the one I really wanted to get to. This was literally on the New York State test last year. This was on the extended response. Yes, they could use calculators, and you will use calculators, but you have to be very, very careful, only because it looks scary. It's not. It's not scary at all. Okay, do this with me. If you were to look at this, I have lots of stuff going on. On the left side, I don't have anything to distribute, but I sure do on the right. So let's work that out first. I'm not distributing 1.5x, so just bring it down the way it is. But I am distributing 6 to x and 6 to negative 3 halves. So I have negative 6x. Now remember, a negative here times a negative over here going to give us a positive. Now also recall if I'm multiplying 6 times 3 halves, it's really 6 over 1. This really equals 18 over 2, or another way to say it is 9. And it's kind of nice because we got rid of that fraction, 1 down. Now on the left side, I still have some decimals here to work with, which is fine, who cares? You have a calculator. All that I did was rewrote what I haven't done anything with yet. But did you notice on both sides, I have a couple of variables. So we probably need to do our x's and no's table. In the x's, I have negative 3.1x. I should have made that bigger for you. I'm sorry. And a negative 7.4x. Okay, if I combine those and the signs are the same, another way to do it, this is how I've always done it, is to just add them together. So I'm going to get 0.5, and 7 and 3 is 10. I have negative 10.5x. Please check me with your calculator. Don't trust me. There's only one constant here, and that's a 7. So I'm just going to add 7. On the right side, I have more variables. I have a little bit more space, too. So I'll try to do my x's and no's table a little bit nicer. In the x's column, I have 1.5x. I also have negative 6x. In the nose, I just have a 9. If you notice, this is a positive. This is a negative. So I have to find the difference. And the difference here is negative 4.5x. So let's start with that. Negative 4.5x 
plus 9. Okay, we're doing all right so far, guys. Come on. Now, I know I have actually more x's on the right side. Even though the number itself is smaller, they're both negative. So that means this is actually a larger number. So I'm going to add 10.5 on the left and add 10.5 on the right. Did I say x? Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. These are opposites, additive opposite, additive inverse. They cancel out. I'm left with 7. You're just bringing that down. I've done nothing with it. 4.5 is a negative. 10.5 is a positive. So I'm finding the difference. The difference between 10.5 and 4.5 is 6x. I think I should take all of the 9s and move those to the left. Whoa, that's a big one. Negative 2 equals 6x. Um, you are running out of space with me, so sorry. So negative 2 equals 6x. If I divide both sides by 6, x equals negative 2 sixths. I don't want to leave it like that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the right answer, but I think I can simplify. They're both even numbers. So if I divide them both by 2, I know x equals negative 1 third. Excellent. Okay, make sure you have this. This is a longer, longer video than I had expected. Let me scroll down. And I want you to try this one on your own. Pause the video, and then I'm going to tell you the solution, not how to. All right, I'm hoping you had a chance to do this. When I did it, and who knows, I could be wrong, I got x equals, I'm not going to tell you. Make sure that you pause the video if you haven't done it yet, but I have x equals 50. If you didn't get that, please let me know. Maybe I did it wrong, but more than likely, you just need to check your work, okay?